One of the things I wonder is, what is it that keeps us from the awareness that somehow produces the Christ life? Do you really know, are you truly aware of who you really are? Ramana Maharashi said that if you ultimately ask that question, it will lead you to enlightenment. Who am I really? In baptism, we hear the words that who you really are, all of you is the beloved. <coughs> that you are loved. That you and all of your darkness, all of the things you don't like about yourself, all of the masks that you wear so that other people will like you, all of the messages, good and bad, are loved and embraced. And yet, rarely do we fully live out of that, do we? Most of the chaos we create in our lives is because we don't really believe that. Is because we think we have to be somebody other than who we are to be loved and accepted. My dad told a story about a sermon that he was giving, I don't know, a long time ago, maybe when I was in high school, telling a story about a girl that he knew and she graduated from college and stayed in the area, stayed in the same place where her family was and kind of went from job to job and never was really able to figure out what direction she wanted for her life. Just kind of went from one thing to the next and was choosing bad relationships. And um, he was meeting with her and he was asking her some about what's going on and Wondering why she hadn't left because she was bright to go to school and do whatever she wanted to do. And she said, I'm waiting to hear from my father that he loves me. Something happens when we don't hear and know that we are loved. And then we build up masks, or we become something other than who we are, or we just live with the pain of feeling like we're not okay. There may be no more damaging doctrine in theological Christian worlds than the idea that our original nature is somehow sinful. That is damaging. The idea of the core of who we could be would not be good and beautiful. That is not the message Jesus hears. Jesus hears a message that you, all of you, is beloved. Do you know that? The interesting thing is that Jesus' enlightenment doesn't stop there. And this is the real interesting one. Not just that he was liberated to fully be himself, because he knew he was loved. But then something really interesting happens. In John, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. That is a radical statement. Because you may be able to say, yes, I basically believe I'm loved. But will you say, I and God are one? Something amazing happens and the beloved, because he knows he is loved, can then become the lover. If you really believed you were the beloved, then you could become the great lover. 
The reason we don't radically love and accept other people is because we really don't believe we are the beloved. Because once you are, you are free. Love is free. That reality is free. It can't be earned. It's free. And you can freely give it. You don't have to hold on to it. You don't have to claim it for your own. You can open up and let it love through you. You can be the great lover. I and God are one. And when that happens, the kingdom of God becomes a reality. So we can talk about all of this and basically what happened with Jesus is what it was an experience. And so what I'm going to invite you into is an experience. Invite you into some moments where you can open up. Where you can lay aside all of those things that keep you from hearing the words, you are beloved. And experiencing that into the core of who you are. I'm going to ask John to come and play. And what I'm going to invite you to do is to begin to hear these words. He's going to play a song that we know. and um, Spirit, wash over me. Open my eyes that I may see all that is around me. And that is basically the prayer that you're going to be invited to sing. And then you're going to begin to hear words that are not just words from our readers. They are the words of God. We need John the Baptists. God's love is not mediated to us without physical people. That's why I think Jesus needs John. Because you are the lover. And you need to give your words and to give your touch so that other people know themselves to be radically the beloved. Jesus doesn't do that just off by himself. John the Baptist mediates through touch, through water, the reality of being the beloved. So in these words, in the sound of this water, in the words that you will begin to hear, rest in being the beloved. So you can sing, you can rest with your hands open, you can close your eyes, you can do whatever you need to do. But we invite you to open yourself to the spirit that comes with words for you. Let us pray. Let us open ourselves. Let us come to the waters of Jordan again and wake up to who we really are, the children and the beloved.